Good morning, everybody. What a great day. What a great day. Can we get a little hallelujah praise for last night? Was that not just an awesome encounter with Christ? I heard some things last night, and uh, one talking about COVID. And I'd like to just kind of share just a situation that happened with us. Now, I, uh, I came home from work one day, and, and I've always, uh, you know, I wore my mask. I did everything. And, but I came home, and I, I, had, I worked out, had a great workout. Later on, I had a little cough. And I thought that, you know, it's just the same old cough I've had before when I've worked out in the cold and, and stuff, and it was no, no big deal. And uh, I kind of like treated it that way. And that next day, Coach Clowney called and said that there had been, and that was a Friday, so that was a, a Saturday, I think it was. He called and said that there had been an outbreak on our staff. So that Monday... I went and had a test, and I would have bet the rent, whatever, that I did not have it, but I did. But my kind of stubbornness in a way and thinking that, man, this macho thing, I'm good, I kind of, I, I took that home. My son was there, and he had just had major surgery. My you know, my wife had some breathing issues and some, some of that kind of thing going on, and here I am. I, I took that thing home with me. And, uh, you know, we, we, I, we prayed about it. But about a day or so into it, my son had severe chest pains. And as we're, we're going through it, so we rush him to the hospital. And you can imagine some of the things that are going through your minds, and, and, and you, some of you guys talked about it last night. You go in the hospital and you may not see them again. And at the time, you couldn't go take them, walk them up there, so we, we put him off, and, and my wife and I sat in the car, and, and we prayed. And we knew that God was with us, that he had his hand all over him. Nevertheless, he's in the hospital. And so we're sitting there, and we'd been there for a little bit, and he was, he was waiting on someone to, to help him. They had checked him in, and he's waiting and waiting. He got a little impatient, and he called us, and he says, I'm not staying here. Come get me. And Lord Jesus, we went, and we got our son. We took him home, and eventually the chest pains went away. But just for that moment, you're wondering what's going to happen. But the Lord had him, and it was like when he walked out of that hospital, you said, oh, my goodness. Oh, my God, thank you. Was so blessed in so many ways. So having an encounter, I really like what, we're, what the theme is, having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes it, it's, you know, you can't wait for the right circumstance to, to have that encounter. It reminds me of a story that's in Mark 10, 46 through 52 about blind Bartimaeus. It reminds me of how as he's sitting on the side of the road, Jesus is passing by. Don't let him pass you by and and so what Blind Bonamator said, he said, son of David, have mercy upon me. And, and, he, and, and as it went on, the next thing, the people around him did what? They said, be quiet, be quiet. 
But sometimes we need to do what? We need to get desperate. And so he, he screamed out loud, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And again, the naysayers are talking. And guys, you, you, the third thing is we, we can't allow the opinions of others to drown out our desperation for him. And so he called out again, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And, and Jesus called him, and guess, and, and, and he, he got up. Sometimes we have to do some bold things. You see what, what he did? He got up. But guess what he did? He threw off his cloak because his cloak represent him being a blind beggar. And so sometimes we have to do what? We have to throw it off. Call him out. Throw it off. Sometimes it's about our childhood that we've been holding on to. Sometimes it's about, well, you know, I, 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 I want to get this done before I encounter him. Sometimes it's about our circumstances. So you do something dramatic. He threw, he threw it off. And he went to him to Jesus, and boy, this is a neat thing. He said, Jesus said, I, I, these words, what wilt thou that I do unto you? He understood the root that of his blindness, and he said, Lord, that, that you would restore my sight. So sometimes you, you, you have to, you, you have to, know the root, but then you got to go big. And he went big. Isn't that a lot of like what we're today? Somebody somewhere in here, we, our prayer is that we encounter the Lord, is that we encounter him, and that we launch deeper, is that we launch deeper not just superficially, that we allow him in our lives. And so as we start to pray, I would like for you guys just for a moment to worship him, to think about his goodness, to think about all that he has done for you. And sometimes when you think about it, you start going, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Just for a second, if individually you would just think about his goodness. Father, we, we come today thanking you for your many blessings. For you've truly been good to us. You have seen many of us, Father. You've seen us through COVID. We just thank you, Father, for your word. Thanking you, Father, for reminding us to launch deeper. That, like Simon Peter, they'd fished all night, they'd caught nothing. But Jesus came aboard, and Jesus said, let's take it deeper, cast your nets on the right side. They trusted him. They didn't give excuses. They trusted him. Will we launch deeper? Thank you, Father, for wanting to be in every aspect of our lives in our work lives, in our home lives, in our church lives, all over us, that's your desire, is for us to have an intimate relationship with you. Because when we have an intimate relationship with you, Father, healing takes place. Thank you, Jesus. Peace occurs. Thank you, Lord, when we have that that, that encounter and we have that intimate relationship. 
Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for reminding us to, to disengage the crowd, the world, and for us to snug like the, like the old lady that needed you, Father, that she disengaged the crowd so that she could snug right up to you, Father, that she could touch your, the hem of your garment. Because, Father, there's peace at the hem of your garment. There's, there's, there's healing, Father. We just thank you. We thank you, Father, for reminding us to discontinue the unworkable. Lord Jesus, we've tried. And sometimes the longer and the more we try, the more frustrated we get that we would discontinue to have that encounter, to touch your garment, that we would discontinue the things that just don't work, that we would get out of ourselves and, and get just to you. And, Father, that we would disrupt the expected. You see, Barnabas, blind Barnabas, was expected to just stay there. You see, the, the little old lady that touched his garment was expected to just be sick for the rest of her life. We just thank you, Father, for snugging, giving us the ability to snug up to you, to hold on to you, to know that you are with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can't thank you enough. For you are with us, Father, even through adversity. You are there. Sickness, you're not welcome here. Dissension, you are not welcome here. Father, death, you are not welcome here. Thank you, Jesus for just always being with us, always looking out for us, always drawing us close to you. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. One day you hung, you bled, you died for a poor, wretched sinner like me. Thank you, Father, for raising, for rising, Thank you, Father, for defeating death. Thank you for saving our souls. Father, we just have so much to be thankful for. Thank you. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Thank you. Father, we are so thankful. We, we thank you for today. We thank you for this event. We thank you for the men that we share with you today for people, the talented people that sing your praise. We thank you. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. For it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.